Hi, welcome back to another video. As you can see, I'm not doing so good today, and I thought I would share what it's like to feel like this, and a different, I've done a video like this before where I talk about how I felt on a flare day, um, but today I feel different than I felt on that day, and I think every flare is different. So I think I will talk about that for a little bit. This wasn't the video that I had planned for today, but I don't have the energy to make something different. I've been having a lot of days like this lately. So um, yeah, I'm trying to push through and get on with my day and like do things that I enjoy and rest and stuff. But it's hard, as you know, and it gets very tiring to feel like this all the time. If you're new here and if you've never seen any of my videos, I'm Olga. I'm 25, almost 26. I have fibromyalgia and I have had it for probably um, close to two years, but only got diagnosed a year and a couple months ago. So February in 2018. Uh, yeah, so at the time my level of disease activity was very high. So I had a very hard time walking. I had a very hard time doing anything and I had absolutely more bad days than good days so for me a good day would be um what I now consider an eh day like a middle-ish day where I don't feel great but I don't feel awful either um right now right right at this precise moment in time I am having probably like half good days and half bad days but from around Christmas time um till probably the end of the around middle of March, I was having a lot of good days, which was great, <laughs> but that's over now apparently. So if you are interested in learning more about fibromyalgia, if you think you might have it, if you know someone who has it and you just wanna know what it's like to live like this, spoiler alert, it's not fun. Over here, I make a mixture of lifestyle videos that things that I enjoy and books and fashion and things like that. And I make educational videos about fibromyalgia where I explain the illness more in depth and the symptoms and all of that a little bit more in depth. Um, but yes, that is me and that is this channel. So if you're new here and you'd like to stick around and help me out, you can consider subscribing to my channel and you can consider becoming a member on Patreon because that would help me a lot. You can also check out my Etsy store because I make stuff when I feel like this and it would mean so much to me if people actually wanted to buy them. So I'll leave all that link below if you want to check it out. Okay, on with the video. Today is Monday. Everybody else is like, yay, slaying on Monday. Get on with the week, yeah. And you're like, oh my God, I'm about to die. So how did I get here? I've been not going to my water aerobics classes, which I normally do once a week. And when I'm going regularly, I find it really helpful and I find it helps with my joint pain uh, it brought a little bit more of my old flexibility back. I feel better when I'm going, but when you don't go for a little while, for whatever reasons, you know, sometimes it's because I'm in too much pain or I'm too tired. Sometimes it's because I don't have a ride, so I can't get there. So I went last Wednesday for the first time in like a few weeks and I felt terrible afterwards. I was exhausted. Obviously I get straight in bed, hot water bottle, um, emergency painkillers, the whole thing. On Thursday, which is the day after, I felt awful. Obviously, totally expected was it's fine. Friday, I felt still really tired and unwell and like not ready, and just not having a good day either. Saturday, I felt better, so I decided I'm gonna go on an outing, and I did. And I went to the aquarium, and even though it was amazing there, uh, there was a lot of walking involved, obviously, and there was a fair amount of stairs. Yeah, I was pretty tired afterwards, so came home, rested, was fine. Then Sunday came, and I decided that I would go grocery shopping and also spend the whole afternoon ironing and doing sorting out all the laundry, which I did successfully, but um, I felt so much pain afterwards that I couldn't sleep. I don't know how long I slept because it's impossible to tell, but I didn't feel, I don't feel like I had a lot of deep sleep at all. I feel awful, really tired, like headachy, painful, just exhausted. I've been having a lot of days where I don't feel well and it sucks and it makes me feel terrible about myself. I've always personally dealt with anxiety, so 
that was already there. But even if you don't have any, when you are chronically ill, you start to struggle with things like depression and anxiety because it's so difficult to live your life. And it's really annoying for us because a lot of times doctors will face, say things like, oh, you can't focus so much on the symptoms. You have to just get on with your life. Get back to your regular thing. Don't think about it. Don't focus so much on the symptoms. And when you feel like this, you're tired from talking and you're tired from chewing and you can't feed yourself properly with healthy foods because you just can't bear to stand and like peel an apple to eat it. You know, if you're exhausted and you don't sleep, it's really hard not to focus on the symptoms when all you feel every day is symptoms. You never feel not painful. You're never not tired. And some people can have less disease activity and they can do more things that normal people do. And some of us have medium disease activity where we can do some of the things that normal people do, but not really have a normal regular life. And then other people have really bad disease activity where they can't at all do anything except just survive and cope with symptoms. And it fluctuates and you can go from being a person with low to medium to high to like whatever. You can have different activity of disease like throughout your life and even throughout a year, it, it changes. And even your symptoms change with the seasons and stuff like that, especially when the weather is really undecisive and it's sunny one day and then it's cloudy and rainy and cold the next. I really struggle with that because I'm my body's constant in, constantly in limbo with the atmospheric pressure and it's it's really tiring it makes my body really tired and achy and just feel you just feel awful if you're having a lot of good days and then you have one bad day or one fatigue day you almost not if the pain the pain is very bad but if you're just really really tired you might be a little bit upset that you don't get to do the things you had planned for that day or something like that but mostly when i will speak from my personal experience but when I have a fatigue day after having a lot of good days. I almost welcome it and think, oh great, now I can like catch up on shows that I'm watching or watch that movie or watch a lot of YouTube videos or read or catch up on whatever. Like you can do online shopping. I, I take it as like a nice day where I can just do whatever I want and I don't have to feel bad about not working and that's okay but like because you think tomorrow I'll feel better and I can have a lot of good days again and then I'll have another bad day where I can just do this again and if that's what is happening with you then that's great because obviously a one rest day between a lot of good days is great because you get to you know stop and slow down for a bit and enjoy yourself and enjoy the things that you don't normally have time to enjoy which is great but when you start having a lot of bad days or an equal amount of good and bad days, which it, it can become quite difficult because you never know what tomorrow is going to be. You never know if tomorrow you're gonna wake up and you're gonna feel f great or if you're gonna feel terrible. And sometimes there isn't an explanation for it. And if it really sucks when you just don't know why you feel the way you do, because when you do something to cause a flare, and something that you really wanted to do, you might even feel proud of yourself because you pushed yourself, you did what you wanted to do, and now you're obviously paying for that. But, you know, that's our life. You, we get used to that. But I think when you're flaring and you don't know why and it doesn't seem, or it seems to be really exaggerated, which is what I feel recently. What I was gonna say is about, you know, it's having a normal life and stuff. Like some people can work a normal full-time job, even if it is with difficulty. I'm not in that group of people. I don't think I could work a full-time job because, for example, today, if I had to go into work, I wouldn't have been able to. And it really annoys me that we have to... Why do we have to be like normal people? I saw the other day this post on Instagram about letting your illness defining you, define you and how it doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing because it is defining. It is part of your identity. It's really hard to describe yourself with one word because everybody is three-dimensional we have a lot of interests we have a lot of things that we're good at we have a lot of things we're not good at we, no one is just one thing being chronically ill especially if you have an illness that is hard to control and is hard to manage and 
does mean that you have to change a lot of things in your household and in your lifestyle to accommodate for the illness it is you are defined by it but it's not and it's not out of choice it's not because you want to be and it's not because you want to be ill because nobody wants to feel like this you have to kind of let the illness define you because you, otherwise you're always fighting against it and i think i've talked about this in other situations but i'm going to talk about it again and it's the concept of us being warriors i know that a lot of people like the term and they identify with it and they find it a powerful statement and a powerful term and they like it and I absolutely am happy for them, great. Personally, I don't feel like I am a warrior because I think the word warrior implies that you are fighting something. And I think it's different with illnesses that can be cured because you are trying to defeat that illness. There are things that you are actually fighting like cancer. You're actually fighting against that illness. You want that you that you want that illness to be beat. With illnesses like mine and many many others that don't have a cure, that don't have a way to beat, and that sometimes you in some people it is manageable and some people it isn't, and sometimes you're managing it and sometimes you're not, and it's really hard to keep up with it because it just fluctuates and it's nobody even understands what it is. And with illnesses like ours where it's chronic, where you're always going to have to deal with the symptoms and to manage the symptoms because you don't know what else, there is no nothing else that you can do, but it's not terminal, it's not going to kill us necessarily, it's just gonna make it really painful to get there. So with illnesses like ours, where you are going to have to live with it for the rest of your life, I find that fighting it is not the right kind of mentality for me personally, because the word has a connotation of fighting against something, of you know battling against something. And I see my illness as a part of me and not as a foreign thing because it's not like a virus. It's not like it's not like something foreign in my system. It's just my body that doesn't function properly. So if I am fighting the illness, I am actually fighting myself because my illness is just just <laughs> my illness is a lack of communication within the central nervous system and a lack of control over over the, the central nervous system everything that has nerves in it which is basically everything in your body there are nerves everywhere so everything can hurt everything can have weird symptoms and everything can stop working or work weirdly and that's why it's so unpredictable because it's not like your your central nervous system doesn't work it's just that it doesn't work as it should and it works weirdly and it doesn't communicate well. So it's just your body and it's your brain that has a problem with it that isn't working as it should be. And I feel that if I am fighting the illness, I am only fighting myself and it's it, it find it exhausting because fighting against yourself when you're already so tired, I find that it's just it's so unproductive it doesn't lead me anywhere and i tried that mentality at the beginning of my diagnosis and i just didn't enjoy it because i felt exhausted and i it, i thought it was so much more frustrating and infuriating because you're not going to win you are never going to win because it controls you it, it literally is the whole system that controls your body doesn't work properly how are you supposed to fight that a lot of people might think that that means giving up and like not trying anymore that's not what I mean at all. What I mean is working with the illness and working with our bodies that have problems in functioning and trying to make the best out of a bad situation. That's what my mentality with my illness is. Okay, what am I capable of doing today? What am I capable of doing always? What am I never capable of doing? Like, what are my limitations? What is my, what is actually happening with my body? And I find that studying what is going on and studying the symptoms, reading into studies and reading into the information that is out there, I can figure out what is happening and I can understand my brain a little bit better. And with that, I can be more accommodating to my illness. I can be more, create more accessibility in my day-to-day -day life to accommodate for the illness so that it, the symptoms aren't taking over my life. They kind of are, but you can still do the things that you like, but you're not fighting against it. Because I find that the more we go against it and the more we try to like pretend it's not there, 
the worse it gets and the more symptoms you get and eventually you're gonna pay that bill it's just so hard and it's just like there are so many factors that affect our health and our central nervous system reading about it informing myself and becoming educated in the topics have really helped me accommodate better and manage better these the symptoms and they have helped me prevent certain symptoms and that's what i mean working with the illness instead of against it but understanding why it's happening you can do more about it than just be like fighting it and angry about it and that's just the way that i see things i'm sorry if this made no sense because i am a little bit foggy and i'm trying to just i'm just venting a little bit if you are experiencing symptoms like me today if you're really having a hard day i'm also sorry about that but you're not alone we all have them and make sure that on days like this you reach out and you talk to other people in the community if you don't have fibromyalgia but you are somebody who has been sent this video or you found it because you want to know what it feels like and what it's like for a family member or a friend or your partner to go through this please never tell them that they are being lazy or they're not trying just love them respect their journey respect what they're going through um, it's very very difficult to feel unwell all the time and to be constantly tired it's imagine you had pulled an all-nighter and now you have to go and do your day every day that's how we feel be patient and inform yourself learn about the illness and try to help them as much as you can but don't force their your help on them. Just let them know that you are there to help and that if they need help, you are happy to do it. Never make them feel like they're a burden and like they are not welcome and not worthy and not valued because we already feel like that and it sucks if somebody close to us makes us feel even worse about that. I'm gonna go now before I talk for three hours, but I hope you enjoyed this video somewhat i don't think this is kind of like an enjoyable video but you know what i mean i hope you liked to learn something new or like feel less alone i don't know i hope that this was informative and enjoyable in some aspect to you if you did enjoy it don't forget to leave it a like and a comment um and consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already you can also consider becoming a member on patreon because it would help me a lot it would support this channel it would help me keep raising awareness for fibromyalgia and by becoming a patreon member you get early access to my videos and exclusive content as well as free shipping in my etsy store if you don't want to like pledge monthly as you have to on patreon you can browse through my Etsy store, see if there's anything that you like. And that purchase would help me a lot. And yes, that's it. That's it. That's all the things that I have to say. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.